What's up, P-Nation? Today, two Americans are gonna try to make some Polish pierogies. Let's see how this goes. What's up, P-Nation? We are doing a video we never thought we would do. Coronavirus has kind of thrown us a loop, and we are now making cooking videos? We are going to make you a cooking video today. And I hope you're really excited, because we're really excited to eat what we're about to make. We're taking you back to Poland. We were there for about three weeks last summer, and it was so much fun, and we were always on the hunt for pierogies. We love dumplings. I mean, we had just kind of come from Southeast Asia. Mm -hmm. We love dumplings there. We were like, oh, Eastern European dumplings? Pierogi? It can be savory or sweet, like everything. Because in Asia, and especially in China, we just had savory Right, dumplings. in like soups and things. Pierogi is just all by itself with caramelized onion and butter and sweet cheese. So today we are making pierogi. Let's get to it. Fun fact, pierogi, fun fact. Pierogi is already plural. So in America, we oftentimes say pierogies. Mm -hmm but that makes it a double plural. So it's like, that doesn't make much sense. For knowledge, we're gonna be calling them pierogi, which is plural is so and not weird. pierogies. I'm so used to saying pierogies. So like one would be like a pierog. I'll be doing most of the cooking today because I'm a little bit more skilled when it comes to cooking things. Zach is an excellent baker. Like if we were making a baking video, he would be the main subject. But you're gonna be seeing my face a lot. But I'm definitely gonna have Zach help with like the, the pinching and the, the rolling. rolling. We don't have a rolling pin, so we're gonna have to figure out how to roll dough out. But I think what we're gonna make is gonna be really delicious, mm -hmm. and I can't wait to try it. Fingers crossed. For the traditional potato and cheese pierogi, we're going to be using potatoes, cheese, onions, and bacon. And for the sweet version, we're going to be using ricotta cheese and blueberry. So today we are following a traditional pierogi recipe. And the first thing to do is boil the potatoes. Now we're working with a very small pot, so I'm going to have to cut these potatoes first. You're supposed to boil them whole, but we don't have that luxury. <laughs> I have never made pierogi before in my life. I've actually never made anything in dumpling form ever, which is kind of surprising to me. But so I am following the recipe super exactly and our pot with the potatoes was too small. So we're going to half this recipe. And we'll have a link below to which recipe we are using. Zach's mom turned us on to this garlic olive oil and it is really, really, really good. And that is what we're using to add the garlic flavor to our pierogi. So now we're going to make the dough. I'm going to let Zach do this part because again, he is our muscles man. And you have to knead this dough for like 10 to 15 minutes. We're gonna make it here on the table. I cleaned it. We need three cups of flour. In a circle or? Yeah, like in a mound. Like a volcano. Like a volcano, yes. Three cups of flour, a pinch of salt. You add in melted butter and a half a cup of milk. And then you slowly add water. So it says like just a pinch of salt. I was recently watching One Tree Hill and she put a pinch and it was like a handful. We're in North Carolina, that's why. We're but South. I love One Tree Hill. <laughs> <laughs> and then you slowly, ooh, our Polish flags. Okay. Butter with the milk? Yeah. Oh, sorry, the milk with butter. That's and then you milk. like. It's kind of rough though. Yeah. Well, this is when you start. Okay. <laughs> okay. We're going. <laughs> We're going. Start mixing. We're going. Start mixing. <laughs> that was so close to going off the table. <laughs> Just like that one. <laughs> we should have done this in a sheet pan. It's okay. That's right. It's a real experience. This is that's, why, that's why you're here to watch us mess up. And that's what we're trying to do. To have a real do. Polish experience. <laughs> okay, yeah. so then you add as much water as you think it needs. So you need to tell me when to stop. This is fun. Smash it like hard or? Yeah, you just work it. We got some dip legs here. Okay. It's pretty doughy. All right, I'm gonna need this for the next 15 minutes. 10 to 15 minutes. Here we go. This is where the muscle comes 
Austin, when we were in Thailand, we took a Thai cooking class and our instructor told me that whenever Leah needed help smashing something, I should be there for her. You know, you get married Very good, Zach. Oh. <laughs> now whenever we do stuff that requires some physical strength, I'm here, but she's really strong. And now we're adding onion, cheese, a half a cup of ricotta, that's pretty good. And then, equal parts, garlic powder, onion powder, pepper, and however much salt you need. Alright, now we have the dough all rested. The filling for the potato and cheese pro geek completed. And now we're gonna roll them out. So, like we said before, we don't have a rolling pin. And we weren't sure what to do. So what we're gonna do here is take little sections of it and like roll it into a ball, okay. put it on a floured surface, and then like smash it with a bowl. And I think this is gonna work. Smash it with a hammer. And it, has to, it said it had to go like pretty thin. So again, this is oh, like, that's yeah, it worked? Yeah. Yeah. And maybe like work it a little bit? Yeah, it's like yeah this you, is gonna be yeah. fine. If our Polish grandma were here to make, help us make dumplings, She'd probably be really concerned with what we're doing. Grandma. Yeah. And then it said to take one teaspoon, uh -huh. okay. and then you use the water to like wet the edges on one side. This is very labor intensive. Okay. And then you fold and crimp. All right. I think it's working. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so this is the savory one. Can we taste this potato? What does it even taste like? I'm a baker, so I don't want to like try raw egg. I'm just like. There's no raw egg. Is that good? You're dancing. That means it's good. It's really good. It's really that's good. That's actually that's really good. Oh. It's kind of like a sweet mashed potato. It's a better than a mashed potato. Why do we put milk in mashed potatoes? We should totally put ricotta in mashed potatoes. That's a winner for okay. me. First dumpling is made. It's our first dumpling. <laughs> So well, while we were in Poland, we had a lot of different sweet types, at least from what I remember, sweet types of pierogi. So we decided we were gonna do a blueberry and ricotta. Cause that was the one we found the most. And even when we went yeah. farther north in Eastern Europe, they had wild blueberries that everyone picked. And so it just seems fitting at the end of summer mm -hmm. to have some blueberries. In our bowl, we just have ricotta cheese and it said to add an egg some sugar and a little bit of salt. And then you add like one blueberry to each pierogi. This is going to be very liberating. One blueberry? Yeah. All right, so how can I help? Yeah, you smash and I'll fill. Okay, that makes fall. sense. Okay. We've got a production line going. Oh, that's so cute! No. I keep going to Asia, but it reminds me of the <laughs> Disney short. What's it called? Poe? Bow. Oh my god, it's this so good. This is not bow, though. You know, pierogies are really good, but what I really miss about Poland is borscht, which is actually, is that Ukrainian? I think it belongs to both. It's a beet soup, and it is so much more than what I've ever expected. Like, I don't like rhubarb, I don't like green beans, I didn't think I would like beets for some reason, and it blew me away. We went to a milk bar, is that what it's called? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Milk bar, yeah. And we didn't know what a milk bar was. Found out it's really just an inexpensive, like, lunch, lunch eatery. Mm -hmm. And everything's really cheap. It's kind of like small portions, but they're really, really popular. So, like, everybody on their lunch breaks, we were there during the middle of the week, was there and it was like kind of an overwhelming experience because we're like get you in get you out you, this takes forever yeah i'm gonna appreciate them so much more next time we have them because they I mean, really do we take probably a have machines time. for the american store bought for the american pierogies <laughs> double plural i thought they know better these might be some thick dumplings Now we're boiling the pierogi and then we're going to fry the potato and cheese in some butter and then we're gonna That's such a satisfying ah! I'm really excited. 
We didn't burn the house down. We did burn the last batch of pierogi. <laughs> but we made so many, so it was okay. I mean, I think we were here rolling them for like 20, 30 minutes. Let us dig in. We added caramelized onions and bacon, real bacon. I'm not sure if dipping them in sour cream was a Polish thing or was it a Ukrainian thing? We did it in both countries. Either way, sour cream is definitely the way to go. pretty doughy. I'm gonna fall out my They are very doughy. It's the American way. She told me they were gonna be too doughy because we made them Texas size. That is so good. I think knowing how much work goes into them, knowing exactly what we put in them, mm -hmm. the onion flavor plays a really big part on the filling and it's just so creamy and that crispiness on the outside. This is delicious. It is. This is really good. We did a good job. You did a good job. You did a good job. Mm. You did a good job. Mmm. I would make this again. This is all I want to eat for the rest of the day. Okay, now to the sweet ones, which she sprinkled in sugar. They turned out massive because they were so hard to roll. So I'm assuming that it's going to be mostly dough. Like they're okay. They're okay. But American desserts are so full of flavor and so sweet. Mm -hmm. And there's like so many aspects and it's crunchy it's and very... chewy. And... Also, I didn't measure out the sugar. I'm sure you could have added more if you wanted to. I think this was the right Polish amount to I put in. I think it was the right Polish no. amount to add in. No. Yeah. You know what? We were definitely on point there. Mm -hmm. So it's not our fault. Back. This plate's gonna be gone. Mmm. <laughs> oh my gosh. Thank you so much for watching and putting up with our new type of content. We've never done anything like this. But it was a lot of fun. I would say that like, we had a really good time like making the little flags and like the little dumplings and just like setting up a kitchen to make a video that I really enjoyed it. Yeah. I, thought I, I thought this was really cute. You're not a cooking show, you're a travel <laughs> channel. We're a cooking tra traveling <laughs> cooking channel now. Well food is such a big part of travel and so I'm glad we were able to bring that back with us to America and have something that tastes kind of like what we got in Poland. I think this is a major success. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Mmm! Today, on today's edition of How Do We Continue a Travel Vlog, Vlog, During Coronavirus, we'll be making pierogies. Mmm! It's so good! So I'll be doing most of the cooking today. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> because Zach... Okay, start it. over, start over. <laughs>